Okay, so in general form, this is what a system of equations looks like, which we kind of already know. We may not know that it's just called general form, right? But it's when you have some coefficient times one variable, and then another coefficient times your second variable. I don't know how many variables you're gonna have. And then another coefficient times your last variable equal to a constant, okay? That's what equations typically look like, right? A linear equation. Linear means there's no square root of x's, no x's to powers, just x, right? Then if you have a system, that means you have more than one equation to solve at the same time, okay? which means you're gonna have another equation with, of course, its own coefficient, but it'll have the same variable here. It'll have another coefficient of the second variable, and it'll have another coefficient of the last variable, but again, equal to some constant. And then again, depending on how many variables you have, that's how many equations you should have, okay? So if I keep going down here, you should end up with something that looks like this, okay? Now, if you were to stick that whole thing into a matrix, you should end up with a square matrix because the same number of variables that there are should be the same number of equations that you have, okay? And then you have enough information to solve this, this system. Now, if all the Bs, no matter what the subscript is, which equation you're looking at, if all of the Bs are equal to zero, what kind of equation is, what kind of system is it? Does anybody remember? Remember this word? Yeah, there you go. And then otherwise it's what? If it's not homogeneous, what do we say? Non, right? They're not trick questions, I promise. <laughs> okay, then just going back to college algebra, there's only two situations that can happen. If the system has at least one solution, it is called a consistent system. So if it has a solution, one or an infinite number of them, it doesn't matter how many solutions, but if it has one, then it's considered consistent. So conversely, if the system does not have a solution, what do you think it would be called? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I should probably complete my sentence, right? I get lazy, sorry. Okay, now we're going to be given the systems, okay? And they're gonna have all the coefficients and the variables in them, and I'm gonna know what all the constants are. That's gonna be given to me, okay? But what we need to do is, this whole chapter is about matrices, right? So I'm gonna need to know how to turn that system of equations into a matrix, okay? And so that's when you start talking about this word, augmented matrix. Augmented means it came from somewhere, right? We didn't just make it up. <laughs> it's coming from something, okay? And it's coming from that system. So when you're doing the matrix, the augmented matrix, you do not need to put any of the variables in there. It's just the coefficients and they have to be in order, okay? And then it's just your, co your constants, okay? That's all that's in the augmented matrix. Now, 
you have to make sure that everything's in order. Sometimes they give it to us as X1, X2, X3. Sometimes they give it to us as X, Y, and Z, right? You just have to make sure they're all in order when you're putting them in the matrix. And if anybody is missing, right? If one of our equations just doesn't even have an X1, what do you think I would put in the augmented matrix for its coefficient? Right, just like when we were solving the little systems with the partial fraction decomp, right? When there was a variable missing on the left-hand side of the equation, we had to put in a zero for it, didn't we? Okay, so it's the same thing here. It would be that guy's first coefficient, then the second guy's coefficient, all the way to the last guy's coefficient, and then this is like your equal sign, and then your constant on the other side. And that would be the first row of that um, augmented matrix. And then you would do the same for the second equation, all of these coefficients, and this constant, until finally you get to the last equation and you put all of his coefficients, and then you put his constant. And there's a bunch of stuff in the middle missing too, right? So depending on how many equations you have, that's what's going to tell you how many rows you have, okay? And depending on how many variables you have, that's going to tell you how many columns you're going to need, okay? But you'll always have that bar and then the constants on the right-hand side, okay? And then in order for us to solve these, the idea is to turn it into what's called an identity matrix. And this is what an identity matrix looks like. Okay, so you have an I, and I'm going to start getting into some weird stuff. Here's a two by two, two rows, two columns, okay? That looks like one, zero, zero, one. These are really the only ones you're going to need. One, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, okay? So I'm not going to do a general one with a bunch of ones and zeros. These are the two particular ones that you're going to need. You're going to need to know what the identity for 2x2 two two looks like, and you're going to need to know what the identity for 3x3 three three looks like. Okay? And the objective to solve a system is to make what's over here on the left-hand side of the bar, to make that look like the identity. Okay? So you want to make this coefficient right here a one, and you wanna make all the rest of these guys zero, and then you wanna make this one a one, and then all the rest of them zeros, and so on and so forth. And you literally need to go in a specific order if you wanna get this thing done like today, <laughs> and not next week, right? Because you can go around and around and around and around in circles when you're doing these things, okay? The trick is to get the one in the very top left first. Then you will use that one to turn everybody else in that same column to zeros, okay? Then you do the same thing for the second column. Get the one first where it needs to be, and then get the other guys to be zeros, okay? Then the same thing for the last column. Get the one where it needs to be first, and then get the other guys in the same column to be zeros. That's the fastest way to get there. Okay, if you do that, you may have to do maximum nine different operations, right? If it's a three by three. If it's a two by two, I'll have to do maximum four operations. That's better than doing something and then undoing it and then having to go back and fix it and then undoing it later and then having, they're gonna be there forever, okay? So just stick with four or less or nine or less, right? That's so much easier. So <laughs> I'm just giving you the strategy. People will do all kinds of things when it comes to matrices, and as long as you're doing it correctly, it's not wrong. I'm just trying to give you advice on how to do it the fastest, okay? Okay, so we need to know how do we change things to ones and zeros, right? So we have what are called row operations. We are allowed to multiply any row by a non-zero number. You just can't multiply by zero because then it zeroes out the whole entire equation, which you don't want to do, OK? 
okay? You don't want to make your variables go away. You want to solve for them, right? So as long as you're multiplying by a non-zero number, this also means you can divide because when you divide, you're really just multiplying by a fraction, right? You're multiplying by the reciprocal. So even though it says the word multiply, it really means divide as well. So if I had a two and I wanted to make that two a one, all I'd have to do is multiply by its reciprocal, which is a half, right? And I can still get make the two turn into a one. The second thing you can do is you can interchange interchange any two rows that's just like instead of writing the top equation on top <laughs> you write it somewhere else but as long as that whole equation is written somewhere else then it's fine okay you're just switching the order of the equations so you can switch any rows at any point in time okay it's just like saying let me give you an example. It's just like saying, instead of writing them with this one on top and that one on bottom, I could write this one on top and then the nine X one on the bottom, right? There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's the same system, isn't it? You're not changing the system, okay? So interchanging whole rows is okay. The last thing, which is the most confusing thing, <laughs> and this is the one where I like to do the work on the side. However, when you, if you see my homework solutions, I don't write all the work, I just do it in my head. But in class, I will write down the steps because I don't want anybody to get lost or wonder where a number came from, okay? So this step I do on the side. This step, is used if you want to change things to zero right because I told you you had to get the ones first in that column and then you had to use that one to make the other guys zero okay and how do you use it you can add any non zero multiple of one row to any other row now there is a second part to this which I don't they don't usually tell you in the book <laughs> but it is it's a thing okay is you replace the non multiple so the guy you didn't multiply by anything okay with the new entries okay so if you multiply one row by two and then add it to the second row then it's the second row that's going to get replaced with all of these new numbers okay it's the one that did not get multiplied by anything that will get replaced okay they don't tell you that but then people start getting confused well which one i got the numbers but what do i do with them where do i put them okay it depends on who you did not multiply by anything if you happen to not multiply either one of them by something you just added them together then then you can choose which one you want to replace okay and you have a goal so you'll know which one you want to replace anyway right the goal is to get the one and the zero zero okay so let's go ahead and start one and we start with a baby one the two by two they get harder we're gonna do a three by three next which takes longer um, and then we'll do a second three by three just so you can see what it looks like because it's weird and then we'll do a third three by three because that one's weird too so there's three different kinds of answers you could get you can get no solution you can get a single solution and then you can get an infinitely many number of solutions so there's three different cases that can happen with systems. And normally with the two by twos, you either get one or you don't, that's it, okay? But with the three by threes, there are specifically three cases. And so we need to cover all three of those cases today before you start going to try to do your homework, right? So two by two is a nice one. First thing we need to do before we can do any of this is get my rows and my columns, right? So turn this into its augmented matrix which means make sure that your variables are in the same order and then put everybody in there, just the coefficients and the constants. No X's should be in this matrix, okay? We just want 
numbers. I like to put them in order, so I like to put the x1s in this column and the x2s in that column, and then I'll put my constants over here. Now we're lucky because these things are not all mixed up and x2s on the right hand side and it's all weird. It's just already set up for me, right? I have x1s in front, x2s next, constants on the right. So this one's already perfectly matched for me to take the augmented matrix. So the coefficient of x1 in the top one is 9. The coefficient of x2 in the top equation is 3, and then the constant is a negative 5. The coefficient for the bottom equation is 2, and then what? 1, and then a negative 1. Okay, so that's my augmented matrix. Unfortunately, you will have fractions almost all the time. Okay, <laughs> so I usually use the calculator for my fractions if I'm too lazy to do it in my head. Okay. I don't have a calculator today, so I'm gonna try to do them in my head. Um, but start with the procedure, right? The focus is to get this side to look like the identity. So we want the one here, and then we need to use it to get the zero there. Then we want the one here, and we gotta use it to get the zero there. Now you may notice you already have the one here, but that's not the correct order, okay? If you go focus on this one first, you're gonna have to undo it later, okay? And so that's not what I want you to do. I don't want you to be going around in circles. So first thing is to get this guy to be a one. How can I get that guy to be a one? The trick is this right here. This is how you always make things a one. This is how you make things a zero, okay? So what would I need to multiply by to make the nine a one? One over nine. So I'm gonna do one over nine times row one and then I use capital R's to tell you myself which one I'm gonna replace okay since I'm doing this to row one that's the only thing I can replace right is row one. and then now I'm gonna do it so one ninth of nine is one three times one ninth actually reduces to one third and then negative five times one ninth does not reduce so I'm still stuck with negative five ninth Okay. The bottom stays exactly the same. I do not suggest that you try to do too many things in the same matrix, okay? One thing at a time. The only thing that you could possibly get away with is after you have the one, you could turn all the zeros into zeros at the same step, okay? But for now, just one thing at a time <laughs> so you don't get anything mixed up. Also, the good thing about doing one thing at a time is that if you get it wrong, you can kind of backtrack, well, where did I go wrong? Okay, I said I was going to do this. I said I was going to do this. Is that exactly what I did? Or did I have an error? Okay, so I always like writing my game plan first and then the answer. Okay, this is just for, so you can look back on it. And in the solutions, I put this so that you know what I did to get that. Okay, okay. Now we need to, got this, we need to make this guy zero. So in order to do that, we'd have to multiply the top row by a non-zero multiple, any, any number we want, and then we have to add it to that bottom row, okay? What would the top have to be so that when I add it to two, I get a zero? Negative two. The top would have to be a negative 2, right, in order for me to do negative 2 plus 2 and get my 0. So it's always going to be the opposite sign, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do negative 2 times row 1, and then I'm going to add row 2. And that's going to give me a new row 2, because this is the one that didn't get multiplied by anything, right? So this is the part where you could do it in your head but chances are you'll make an error, okay? So I like to do it right here in this little space that's missing. That's where I do it. So negative two times row two is gonna give me negative two, negative two thirds, and then that's gonna turn that to a positive 10 ninths, right? And then row one stays exactly the same, but then I've gotta add these together. This will give me positive one third, and this will give me one ninth. If you're not fantastic at fractions, use the calculator, right? 
You don't need to sit here wrecking your brain over the fraction parts, <laughs> okay? So then now that is gonna go in my new row two. My row one did not change, so I'm keeping that one the same. Okay. Then now we have to make go to the next column. We've got to make the one a one first. Who's supposed to be? Oh, they're both the same number. <laughs> Well, which one? The top one third or the bottom one third is supposed to be the one? The bottom is supposed to be a one. So this guy right here, what can I multiply by that to make it a one? Three. So three times row two to me my new row two. So I'm doing nothing to row one, I'm just rewriting it. And be careful when you rewrite it because I don't know how many times I've written down the wrong sign or just the wrong number entirely. <laughs> so make sure you, re you rewrite them, rewrite them correctly. Double check yourself. Here I'll get zero, one, and then three ninths, which will reduce to one third. Then now we've got to use that one to make the top one third a zero. So use the opposite sign, right? We talked about that. So I'm gonna take negative one third times row two and add it to row one so I can get my new row one with the zero where I want it, okay? So let's do that. Zero times one third is still zero. One times negative one third is negative one third. And then one third times negative one third is negative one ninth. Then I'm gonna put row one underneath it and then I'm gonna add these together. So I'm going to get one, I'm going to get zero, I'm gonna get negative six ninths, which is two thirds. So my row one is going to become one, zero, and negative two thirds. My bottom row is gonna stay the same as it was in the previous step. It's only row one that's got the capital R, right? So only row one gets replaced. Once you have the identity, you're done. Okay, you're done with all the matrix junk. Now you just have to tell me what the answer is, right? Remember, this is why I do this, okay, at the very beginning, because then it tells me what this is. It's the coefficient of who. Who was in the first column? X1 is the first column, right? So this is the coefficient of x1. I have zero x2s, but then I have my equal sign, which is this bar, and my constant, which is negative 2 thirds. For the bottom equation, I have no x1s, but my coefficient of x2 is a one, little imaginary one, right? My equals is the bar, and the constant I get for this equation is one third. And that is your solution. X1 has got to be negative two thirds, X2 has got to be one third. Okay? I need you to know how to do this because I said variables, but really it's going to be imaginaries, which you will treat like variables. Okay? But you are going to need to know how to do all this row operation because eventually you're going to have to do it with imaginary numbers. Okay, not till like next Tuesday, but still, you will have to do imaginary things in here. Okay, which gets real exciting because there's a whole bunch of drama going on. <laughs> but let's try one again. This one's longer. We'll call that one example one. We'll call this one example two. So now we need to do it three by three. And we're going to have to do three three by threes because I need you to see all the different cases. Now that we kind of got the premise down, I will go a little bit faster, but not too fast because then I'll get lost. Um, but we'll go a little bit faster for the next one because we already got the game plan. We kind of already have an idea of how to turn things into a one and then how to turn things into a zero. So first step is write 
the matrix. And is everybody in order and only my constants on the right hand side? Yeah, so I can just go straight into my matrix. Excuse me. 1, 2, negative 1, 0. 2, 1, 2, 9. 1, negative 1, 1, 3. So then let's see. This is already a 1, isn't it? Awesome. I don't have to do that step then, right? So how do I use that one to make this guy a zero? What do I need to multiply that by to make this a zero? Mm -hmm. It's always the opposite. So negative two times row one plus row two will give me my new row two. So I'm going to do the work over here. Negative two, negative four, positive two, and still zero. So I'm multiplying everybody in row one by a negative two. And then I just rewrote row two underneath that. So this guy gives me the zero, a negative three, a four, and a nine. So my matrix is going to become zero, negative three, four, and nine. This is where I was saying, if you're gonna do two steps in one matrix, it's okay, but only when you're making things zero, okay? So I could leave this empty and go figure out what row three is gonna look like before I put it in there, okay? So I'm gonna do that over here. What would row one need to be to make this a zero? negative one. So I'm going to do negative one times row one and then I'm going to add row three so I can get a new row three. That means row one is going to turn into negative one, negative two, positive one, and still zero. And then row three I'm just going to rewrite underneath and then I can add these together. I get zero, negative three, two, and three. And so that's what's going to go here. It's the only time you can do two and one is when you're turning the zeros, okay? Don't try to turn something into a one and turn something into zeros in the same step. You can get really, really mixed up that way. Okay, where should I be focused now? into a one, right? So the middle guy of row two, that guy needs to turn into a one. What would I have to multiply it by to turn it into a one? Yes. So negative one third times row two will give me my new row two. So that'll become a positive one, this will become a negative four thirds, and this will become a negative three. And when I turn things into a one, that is the only thing I do, okay? You just rewrite everything else. Don't do anything else when it turns stuff into ones. Now that I'm gonna turn things into zeros, now's where I could do two steps in one matrix, okay? So first, how do I turn this top one into a zero? What do I multiply by row two to get that zero in row one where I want it? A negative two. And then just for argument's sake, what do I multiply row two by to get the zero in row three? Positive three has to be the opposite, right? And now I'm gonna actually do it. So let's see, row two times a negative two. That's still zero, that's negative two, that will turn into eight thirds positive. This will turn into positive six. Row one will go right underneath that, and then I'll add them together.
So my row one is going to become one, zero, five thirds, and six. Row two's got the one, so we should not be changing that row. It should be staying the same because it's exactly the way we want it for right now. But I do have some computation over here to make that zero in row three, right? So three times row two, that's still zero, three, negative four, and negative nine. And then I have to add row three to it. So I get zero, zero, negative two, and negative six. This one's the short step. How do I turn that negative two now into a one? What do I multiply by? Negative one, negative one half. So remember, when you're turning things into a one, do not change anything else. So I'm just rewriting the first two rows so I can just change the bottom guy to a one. So if I multiply these, is there still zeros? That will become a positive one, and that will become a positive three. Now is where I can do the two steps. What do I have to multiply row three by so that I can turn what's in row one to a zero? always use the opposite, right? What's the opposite of positive five-thirds? It'd be negative five-thirds, right? And I'm just gonna write the game plan for this guy too. I would have to multiply it by a positive four-thirds, right? So that I could get the zero in row two. So we wanna turn this guy to zero, so we use the opposite sign. And we want to turn this guy into a zero, so we use the opposite sign. And you have to add, you have to do the row three, because that's the game plan, right? Is to use that one to turn the other two into zeros. So let me do the computation. This is going to be still zero, zero, negative five thirds, and negative five. This will be one, zero, five thirds and six and I get one that's nice now let's do it with four thirds so still zero zero four thirds and four and then row two goes underneath it and when I combine them I get zero one zero oh and one again so row one is becoming new. It's going to become this. Row two is going to become this. And row three is gonna stay exactly the same. That one was already good to go. We now have our identity on the left-hand side. So we should be able to just tell you what the answer is. This column represents which variable? Huh, so that means x1 equals 1. This column is x what? 2, so that also equals 1. And then x3 equals 3. And so there's my solution. So just like the other one, right? We got numbers, okay? But there are two other things that can happen. You could get no solution, or you could get infinitely many solutions. Those two are actually shorter than the ones that you actually get a solution. So even though they sound weird, they're actually sh shorter in the amount of steps that I have to complete, okay? How many steps did we do? We did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight steps. We didn't have to do the first step, right? Because it was already a one. So, but we still had eight steps that we had to do. I promise you, if you don't do them in this order, <laughs> you
you're gonna be going it'll take you a lot more than than the eight steps okay because you'll go change somebody to a one and then they'll change it back later if you replace the wrong guy or if you change things into zeros prematurely they're gonna change <laughs> later and then you're gonna have to change them back to zeros so that's not good make sure you do them in that order okay here's another example what does it look like when I get um, when I don't get an answer, right? Something that looks like that. What else can happen? Dun, dun, dun. Like, how would I know that there's no solution? And how would I know that there's an infinitely many solutions, right? Especially since I'm looking at a matrix, right? How would I know there's no solution? So first step is to put it in the augmented matrix. So I'm going to have that for row one this for row two, and this for row three. So this one might not be so bad because there are definitely a lot of ones, right? Do you need to do step one? It's already a one, right? Okay, step two and three though, we can do at the same time. We can turn both of those into zeros. Focus on row two first. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply row one by something Add it to row two to get a new row two so I can have that zero where I want in row two. Okay, what do I need? If this is a one, what do I need to make it a zero? I need to add what? A negative one. So that means this number here needs to be a negative one. So if I multiply all these guys by a negative one, those are going to turn positive and that one will turn negative. Put row two underneath it and combine. So row two is going to become zero, zero, two, and negative five. Row one you should not be changing because it has the one where it's supposed to be. Now we focus on row three. That also needs to be a zero. And it's currently a negative one. So what would I wrote to multiply row one by to change row three to a zero? It's always the opposite, right? What's the opposite of negative one? Positive one. So really I don't do anything to row one essentially, right? But row three needs to go underneath. And then I get 0, 0, 0, and 12. So 0, 0, 0, 12. Remember the focus. I'm supposed to get a 1 here next, right? But remember how I told you you get 1s. You get 1s by multiplying by a non-zero number, right? I can't take the reciprocal of zero. That would be one over zero, right? And that's not a number. <laughs> that's undefined, okay? So you cannot multiply that by something to get a one. If it's a zero, it's stuck as a zero as far as trying to make it into a one, okay? So that means I'm stuck here. I can't do it. I can't continue any further, okay? If I could get that one, I would. And then I turned the bottom guy into a zero, right? Which is already a zero. So I'm screwed. But the indicator is, is when you get zeros for all your variables, you're stuck. You cannot go any further. There's not going to be anything else to do. And don't I already have zeros for all my variables at the bottom? Right? That means I have no x's, no x1's, no x2's, and no x3's. So then what do I have on the left-hand side? If I don't have any variables, what is on the left-hand side? So 
So I'm turning the bottom equation in or the bottom row back into its equation. I have nothing, right? What's the mathematical way of saying nothing? Nope. Not yet. Zero, right? There's nothing on the left hand side. There has to be something. <laughs> zero, okay? So I have no more variables. I have zero on the left hand side. But on the right hand side of the equation, what do I have? 12. And is that even possible? This is not possible, which is why there's no solution here. Now, the next example, I'm going to do it, but I'm already going to tell you what you're going to get, okay? The question is, that happens is, okay, great, it says 0 on the left, and it says 12 on the right, so I know those are not equal, so I know that there's no solution. But what if the 12 was a 0? Then what do I say, right? Because doesn't 0 equal 0, right? And then I wouldn't say there's no solution because that's true, zero does equal zero. How do I deal with it from there, okay? So that's what's gonna happen in the next example. I am gonna get all zeros, okay? So we know that's gonna happen. But what we do from there is important, okay? So I'm gonna have to still do all the matrix junk and then we'll deal with what we do next, okay? What it means when you get all zeros is it means there are an infinitely many solutions. It means one of those guys, I don't know who, but he's basically invisible, and it doesn't matter what he is, the equations will always come out equal, okay? So let's go ahead and see what the next example looks like. And somebody is talking about me. My ears are burning real bad. <laughs> Okay, matrix first, one, 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 and a three. One, negative one, negative one, negative one. Three, one, one, and five. So again, step one is done for me. I don't need to change the top guy into a one, it's already ready. But I'm gonna use that one to change this guy to a zero and this guy to a zero. So I need a negative one then to make row two turn into zero. And I'm gonna need a negative three for row three. So let's do this computation. That'll be negative one, negative one, negative one, negative three. And then row two is one, negative one, negative one, negative one. So that's gonna be my new row two. Row one's already got the one where it belongs, so that one's gonna stay the same. Now I gotta go change row three. So we get 0, negative 2, negative 2, negative 4. I don't have the zeros yet, so I need to keep going. Who needs to change to the 1? Mm -hmm. This guy, right? So how do I make that guy turn into a one? What do I multiply by? Negative one half. And that's all I do. So I'm gonna rewrite the other rows because I'm only changing that guy to a one. Zero times negative one half is still zero. 
This will become positive 1, so will this, and then this will become a positive 2. Negative 4 times negative 1 half is going to be a positive 2. We have to keep going. We have to use that 1 to make the other guys zeros, right? And we can do both in one step, in one matrix. So I'm going to need a negative 1 to turn this guy to a 0. So negative 1 times row 2 plus row 1. I'm using capitals for no reason. So that I can get my new row 1. I can have the 0 where I want it. Now for the bottom, I'm going to need a positive 2. So I could get a new row 3. Wherever the 1 is, that's where you're multiplying by, right? So I've got the 1 here where I want it, so that's the one that's going to get multiplied by what I need. Now let's do the computation. That's still 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, 1, 1, 1, 3. Over here, I'm going to get 0 still, 2, 2, and 4. Row 3 goes underneath. And when I combine them, there's my zeros. So row 1 becomes this. Row 2 is going to stay the way it was. And row 3 is going to become this. Now this one is different because when you change this, you get 0 equals 0, right? And that's always true. So that doesn't mean I can just stop and say there's no solution. I can't. I have to keep going, okay? So change this one into its equation. I would have x2 plus x3 equal to 2. And then change the top row into an equation. It would be x1 equals 1. Now, who am I not able to get the 1 for? I was supposed to have a whole row of 1's, right? This is the guy that I couldn't turn into a 1, right? Which variable does that represent? Mm-hmm. This represents x3. So what you do is you say let x3 equal t. Something. It's going to be something. I don't know what it is and t could be anything, right? This is where that infinite solutions come from because it could be anything. So let it be t. Well, then that means that the second equation is now x2 plus t equal to 2. Then what is just x2? Mm -hmm. Minus the t over, so you get 2 minus t. Now if x1 had some x3s in there and some x2s in there, then you would have to substitute those in there. You would have to put t for all the x3s, and you would have to put 2 minus t for all the x2s, okay? And then you'd have to get the x1 by itself, so you'd have nothing but t's and numbers on the right-hand side. But here, I don't have any x1s or x, I mean, any x2s or x3s. So x1 is just 1. So your answer is going to look like this. It is an infinitely many answers, solutions x1 equals 1, x2 equals 2 minus t, and x3 equals t. This is the solution. And then sometimes the books say t is arbitrary, which means t can be anything. That's why there's an infinite number of solutions. But the solutions have to have a specific relationship. Relationship is that no matter what number you use, this one will be 2 minus that number. Okay? 
So even though there are an infinitely many number of solutions, they have a specific kind of relationship with each other. Okay? So let me give you the homework for this section. I have a bunch of them because I need you to know how to do these. <laughs> Most of them are two by twos, but then you have some three by threes. So I think this first few problems, they're two by twos, which we do need to know how to do. I know they're faster, but we need to know how to do those. Then eventually you start getting into the three by threes. And I need you to have practice with all the three different situations that are going on, okay? I'm gonna stop the video here. I'm gonna do a separate video for 8.4, but I promise 8.4 is probably gonna take like five or 10 minutes, okay? <laughs> but let me stop this one and then we'll do another one.